Alpha. What's up guys? I'm Richard de Gavea and I'm back again with another Sony Alpha wildlife photography workshop. We're going to be looking at leopards, at giraffe and at buffalo. Now all of this was shot at Sabi Sabi Private Game Reserve and this place is world renowned for its leopards. And this specific leopard sighting was incredible. A outfit called Panthera who do leopard research uh, throughout Africa and the world and cat research throughout the world was out and they were doing some darting of leopards so they were trying to get leopards to come in and they called me in and let me, knew, let me know that there was a male leopard around when we got in there there was not only a male but there was another female and it was this interesting interaction where the male was looking for the female the female pushed off and the male sat in the grass so let's go and start talking about how i photographed this male okay amazing we're with a beautiful male leopard and he's looking for a female the females moved off to the side here so all my settings are just about trying to keep things narrow there's a lot of beautiful brown grass here um, which is blurring out because of my very small aperture so it's a big thing he's just laid down now let me see if I can position myself a little better here. All right. So I can hear the Impala or alarm calling for the other female. Which is pretty cool. He's listening. So he's trying to get in touch with her. So my settings, I'm up to... Still at 2.8, 1250 ISO, and my shutter speed I'm getting at the moment is around 800th of a second. It's giving me a really shallow depth of field, and I'm trying to keep that focus point right on his face, um, as close to the eye. As soon as he, because he's side on, the eye autofocus isn't picking anything up, but as soon as he turns, to look at me, the eye autofocus automatically picks it up, holds on, and stays with it. And it's the 400 at the moment is the perfect thing. I'm able to frame his entire body, including his tail. His tail will be very softly blurred, um, but his face will be sharp, sharp, sharp. Even in just that time, we're starting to lose light. Lights dropped to 6 40th of a second in that short amount of time. The overcast weather doesn't help, but it does help with their movement. There is heads up. He might have seen her. It could be an interesting bit of interaction should they come together. I'm bumping my ISO up to 2000 just to make sure that I'm not gonna miss something where 2000 ISO is perfect he's gonna look back 20 frames a second so I don't miss anything we sort out card space later oh yes as he looked back at me there the eye autofocus grabbed his eye allowing me to just focus on on composition I don't have to move any spots around Excuse a pun with a leopard, but I don't have to move my focus spot around. It automatically finds the eye, locks onto the eye, and I can shoot. So I'm shooting as fast as I possibly can just to make sure. And like I say, I probably took 50, 60, 70 shots there. When I go into editing, I will look for the one I want and disregard the rest. Um, that's the key to the way I edit. Right, so things were just about heating up. But before I go on, just remember the promo code WILDRICHARD05. Yes, I'm a wild one. WILDRICHARD05 for a 10% cashback discount on your next Sony Alpha purchase. There are terms and conditions, but all of these can be checked on cashbacks.co.za. Now moving along, 
the female leopard then started pulling back into the sighting. And as she came back in, there was immediate interaction and I knew that, with the, that they were gonna start mating. And these leopards started mating. Now leopards mating is crazy. It happens every 15 minutes for five days. And in the beginning, what it does is it's almost every two to three minutes. So these guys start going at it, hammer and tongue. Everything's cool. They're moving around. The female's busy courting the male and getting him excited so that he can mate with her. And they move down to the river. I tried to follow, then they move back up. And as I came around the corner, there was a third leopard and there was just an almighty fight. Now, as this fight went on, the male jumped in, the females were fighting, and all three of them were going at it. They eventually moved down into the bush, and then the bush seemed to come alive with the noises of these guys fighting. And afterwards, they went their separate ways with the original two coming back together later that evening to get together and carry on that mating process. All right, so as we got in and these leopards started mating, things were heating up. Males and females were going at it and everything in the bush is about feeding and about babies and making babies. So it's all about procreation, surviving long enough to breed. So there's a lot of tension and being solitary cats for the most part, coming together is quite tense. And as they were moving around, light was dropping. It was getting dark very fast. My shutter speed was dropping. I was already at 3200 ISO and my shutter speed was a hundredth of a second. As I came back up expecting some time to do things, a female leopard ran in and started fighting with the other female. The male jumped in and there was a mad to do about everything. So there was chaos going on and all I could do was shoot with what I had. Hundredth of a second, it's quite slow, it's not gonna freeze any action, but I had to just trust that it was going to happen. I couldn't change anything at that stage. So shooting in the slower shutter speed gave me this motion blur and what it allowed me to do was pick out a few images that tell a story, they're not they probably would have been better off being a faster shutter speed, but sometimes you get lucky. So don't stop shooting because you go, oh, I've got the wrong settings. So it was an amazing sighting, incredible. You cannot get better than that. It was probably one of my top five leopard sightings of my life and absolutely awesome. But then let's move on and go on to photographing giraffe. And it was quite a beautiful afternoon and you don't really expect it but we found these two beautiful male giraffe and they were out in an open area they started feeding and then after feeding they decided they were gonna have a little tussle a little thing called necking and they swing their heads around and knock each other with their horns and they were doing this beautiful dance as they were going along so let's have a look at how I photographed the giraffe All right, so in the background here, we've got two male giraffe. A little bit uh, skittish of me because I've been moving up and down in the vehicle, but they're looking around. And giraffe again are such a difficult thing to photograph. So the idea here, especially because they're skittish, is to give them as much space as possible. And that's where having a longer lens helps whether it be a 400 2.8 or the 100 400 or a 200 600, you're gonna be able to get in a lot closer without having to disturb them. You can see they're now relaxing. They're actually looking off to the side there. So I would suspect that there probably are a few more males down the back there um, that are moving. And if they really get dead still and just stare, there could be a predator in the area. But our idea here is to empower this creature to make it as big as possible so the one thought would be to put it in situ so a wider shot and put it against the background and the background there is quite beautiful the other option is to go tight but you'll have to go portrait because it's such a long creature make him look tall make him take up the whole frame from bottom to top leave a space at the bottom leave a space at the top and then shoot so again, my current settings, 
I'm not hugely worried about how fast my shutter speed is. It's it. I want it fast enough to freeze the action so that if I'm shaking, I'm going to get a good shot. But for the most part, these guys are standing very still. So it's really my own movement that needs to be taken into account. So the idea is, is that you keep your shutter speed equal to or twice as much as your focal length. So it's a full frame body, 400 mil lens, 400th of a second. If it was a crop sensor body, it would mean a 400 mil lens, 1.5 times would mean 600th of a second. Right, and then what we're gonna do is look at that and try to keep our depth of field as small as possible. Because the background is so far away, it'll create this beautiful background blur, um, which will make the subject pop from the background, making it really sharp. What I've used on here is the, I've used um, the tracking sensitivity, the tracking focus type. And what that's doing is I can then put the focus block on its head and then recompose. So I'm so I'd put the focus spot on where he is and then I would work it. So now because there's quite a dark spot behind him in this picture. Um what I'm going to do is actually Underexpose the photo slightly. So just he is in. And then I'm going to put that block on him again and then recompose how I want it. And then shoot. You can see I've got quite a narrow depth of field. We could probably go up to F4 just because we're so far away. And 1 2 50th of a second is a nice pace. Oh, yes. I think that'll work very nicely. It's really nice stuff. They're busy swinging their heads, doing some really twirly whirlies. So shooting now, because the background's so nice and far away, I'm gonna try and sort of settle. I'm gonna use my knee as a stand. And these guys are just in such beautiful light at the moment. So I've dropped my, I'm still keeping my aperture at about F4. And they're going to start swinging again now. I'm being careful to leave space where their legs would go to. So it doesn't look like they got short legs. Again, what I'm trying to do, my knee is, an, is a good point of stability. I have a beanbag which I'm sitting on at the moment for a little bit of height when I'm driving so I can see tracks. But it's really just about trying to keep your camera as stable as possible and then utilizing it from there. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I've made when taking photographs is not keeping your camera as stable as possible. As a learned behavior, hand underneath, elbow tucked in to yourself, or rested on something, especially if it's a big lens like this, or use a gimbal like this one over here, will make the Gitzo gimbal, will make a big difference to things. So really concentrate and focus on keeping your camera as steady as possible. The next thing is shutter speed. Once you've got shutter speed down, then we get to this point where you're, you've got stability and you've got a fast enough shutter speed to to negate any unwanted camera shake plus it freeze any movement on the other hand with these guys okay so now we've finished with these giraffe and while i was on the reserve and i was here for about seven days it was quite a I, it's unreal that during the lockdown that things got so active and that I could find so much on my own. I didn't know whether it was going to be possible, but there was a really big herd of buffalo. What I thought was initially around 50 turned out to be closer to 250 animals. And these animals were moving around and, and generally it's quite difficult to, to capture that size of things. But let's go in and see how I handled and what I did to, to photograph these buffalo. All right, guys, so we've got 
a herd of buffalo here. There's quite a few. I mean, I, it's 50 plus. And buffalo, notoriously, you can see this guy standing up, are notoriously difficult to photograph again because they're they're dark and their eyes are small. So we have to consider different ways that we're going to approach this situation. One of the ways we're going to approach it is full facial portraits, especially of the males, to capture the big horns. Um, the light is incredibly dreary at the moment, uh, but it's good in one way because it's nice and flat. So we'll, we're not fighting with contrast with the dark animals. So it works nicely. And if we can get something that allows us to go a bit wider and open things up, the gloomy clouds above will actually create this really, really nice um, feel. We can create real drama with it. So I've said my settings at the moment are at a thousandth of a second. Um, 2.8, I want to be wide open so that we can get things moving. They look like they're moving down that way, so I might try and get around them. Um, and I'm at 1,250 ISO. So we're quite high on the ISO already, trying to get that whole situation sorted so we have a fast enough shutter speed. And then as per whatever the situation may be, I will change my settings accordingly. Big herds of buffalo are really tough to photograph just in general because of the fact that there is there's so many of them and again they're dark against this brown background that we see here. So we've just got to find a really good way of producing this, of doing this, of getting the photo that we need. Right, so we've got a big buffalo bull here. And obviously I've got a lot of lens. The light is quite nicely shaded either side. So it creates a, a filming term called chiaroscuro. And I'm just seeing how he's going to work. There's also an ox picker on his back, which is always nice to, to try and capture. Ox peckers are very pretty birds that eat uh, all of the... Uh, ticks off of these guys. Now a buffalo can carry anything up to 100,000 ticks on its body so that's a quite a serious amount and um, so it's always nice to try and get them like a bright red bulls if you're lucky enough to get the yellow ox peckers they're also a great one to get going. There's one on the head now on the no he's jumped off there he was on the boss of the of the rhino and then what I'm trying to do is also just darken the subject and make sure that he's the birds then popping from the background. So don't forget with the bigger herbivores like buffalo, it's not just about the buffalo. Buffalo are not the easiest things to photograph, but the birds around them, how they're moving around, uh, the size of the herds, things like that, unique aspects that you have to look out for. So and another unique aspect that we just had with a, with a herd that that was around was a leucistic baby so leucism is a form where there is very little melanin um in the, uh, the the animal doesn't produce a lot of melanin and this makes them gives them a white comes out white so you can see in this photo that the baby is actually very very white like a creamy white and this is just unique so it's not something you'd see every day it's beautiful to photograph because you're capturing something that not everyone has and that's what you're trying to do with photography trying to be a bit different and with wildlife photography it's not always about you changing how you shoot it's also about capturing the uniqueness of nature all right so then on the last day i decided to change things up to to try and add a different perspective and this is where lenses come in and how things can change the way your photography happens is your lens choice so I decided I was only going to take the 600 mil out and use solely the 600 mil. And I bumped into the herd of, of buffalo as they were moving along and they moved down to a watering hole where they were drinking in this beautiful water hole. 
and there's a little hide right by the water hole so i got in the hide and was shooting and it allowed me only to get close frame shots of the heads the ox peckers around them so the one photo with the uh, ox pecker drinking from next to the buffalo it was all about trying to frame it and not try and get too much of the whole body there was one image before i got in the hide where i took it from further back so my distance then played a role rather than the lens to create the image but for the most part it was all about tight shots and capturing what the buffalo's features looked like and the fur and how they drink all right so this has been an amazing episode lots and lots of different things to think about please if you have any questions drop me a line on social media either on instagram or facebook and tell me what you think or any questions you may have i'll happily answer those things don't forget the promo code wildrichard05 they, that'll get you a 10 percent discount off of your next Sony Alpha purchase. There are terms and conditions in terms of lenses that can be bought with that cashback deal, but on the whole part, it's a great saving. So go to cashbacks.co.za for that. And next week, we are going to be looking at post-production. So I'm gonna go through some of my favorite images of the whole series, and I'm gonna show you how I bring all those images into Lightroom, how I file my images and sort through my images, as well as the editing of those images. So I look forward to seeing you then. Stay safe and look out for others, and we'll see you again soon.